Good morning. We're on the record in case D243 versus Chester. Council, appearance for the record, please. Your Honor, good morning. This is Kimber Locks for McFarling Law Group, bar 15263. And I have on the call Astasia Lucas, who's an associate at my firm. She was just barred. Her, she's 15591. She's just here to uh, observe, if that's okay. Okay. If everybody else who's not speaking can mute their microphone, it seems like we're getting a little bit of fab, uh, feedback. And you represent um, Mr. Kester. Is that right, counsel? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Okay, perfect. Um, is Ms. Kester present? I don't see anybody else but three people on my screen. Um, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Um, state your name for the record, please. Don Perez. Okay, Ms. Perez, I'm sorry. We still have it as Kester will probably always be in this system. That's just how it works. Um, okay, oh, now I'm only seeing your speaker. Per oh, there you go. That's better. Can you see um, me? I can see you now. Thank you. Um, I just said that she, um, counsel has said she had somebody else observing. I didn't know if that was on a separate feed or not. So perfect. Okay, this is the time set for a couple of things. I have mom's motion to modify child support and and I have uh, mom's motion to modify custody. I have dad's opposition. Um, let's talk a little bit about the things in your motion, mom. It is your motion, so you get to go first. Um, I have a few questions for you on it. Right. You basically, you now have stated uh, some things that I am a little concerned about. Um, let me go back through my notes. Um, whenever we did the last order, you said you were done with Cody Greenfield and that he was out of your life, and now all of a sudden I'm hearing you're engaged and you guys are all back together. That was a problem for the court before with your ch with with your child. Well, children then, now child. Tell me what's going on, Mom. Um. So, yeah, so over the last four years, <clears throat> we have been working on a relationship. Uh, we were separated uh, for on and off going through that time. And... Um, so we both went through counseling and um, therapy, uh, went through the church, through step study. And um, since then, we have uh, really worked on our relationship <coughs> in regards to being able to use those tools to have a healthy relationship. And so us putting both of our effort in um, to have a relationship, uh, so that's what we did. And now oh. we're engaged. Okay, I, I still doesn't make the court really comfortable. We'll go through that and we'll discuss it a little further. Um, your request, Mom, was a twofold. First of all, you requested a change of child support. Your income was twenty eight seventy three at the time. Now, um, I, I do know a lot of um, dentists have started. You, you work with the dental office, is that right? That's correct. Okay, are you back to work now? Because I know my dentist is back to work full speed. Yes, I did go back to work. Mm -hmm. Making okay. the same. So really, your your child support request is moot, right? That means it's it's not your child support is moot, right? Your request. My re correct. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't have a problem year, but... with changing that. I just have an issue with with other things in regards to that because I am now paying for medical co coverage when the father is uh, responsible for that part of it. So with that okay. said, I'm paying two hundred dollars extra a month um, in premiums for medical coverage for Avery. Okay, child support or, or health insurance is normally divided by both parties under under statute. My question is, um, and, and at one time, if you have it, and then when you no longer have the ability to get it for free or through your work, then the parties normally have to split that cost. That's a normal cost. He's paying for the the expenses of the child most of the time, <coughs> and then you're only paying for 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 your the child support portion. You understand? You pay your part as child support. He pays his part in support by paying providing majority of the lights, utilities, food, all that kind of stuff, and the child's in his care. So I don't see that to be an issue. Anything else that you say you're doing in, in relation to, you said a couple of things. What is the other well, thing? Yeah, there was a couple concerns that I have in regards to the defendant um, because he's not providing a home for Avery. Oh. Avery has been living with the grandma for the last four years full time. Okay, and we're going to talk about the, that too. We had a discussion about that last time where he could not do a guardianship. Remember, we had a discussion that last time you were before me, right, Mom? Correct. And yeah, yeah, I, I remember that in my notes. I haven't lost sight yes. of that. Um, we're going to discuss that. Um, the, the other issues you talked about were the allergies of the, the cat. Dad had some responses regarding a system that has been put in. Um, so we also have a child that is now 15 years old. Yes. Are you counsel? 
Yes, you did. I'm so sorry, I'm so Mike. Sorry, Mike. Oh. Now you're in two places, evidently. Okay, are you there now? Hold on a minute, Miss Ma'am, Miss Perez. Okay. Yes, I'm so sorry about that, Council. My internet went out for a second, so I had to grab my phone, and so um, I'm back on now. Okay, so let me tell you what I've discussed then, since you probably missed part of it. We had a discussion regarding her child support request reduction is moot. We had a discussion regarding Cody Greenfield, that they are now getting engaged. They've gone through all this stuff through counseling. We also had a discussion regarding, we were just having a discussion regarding um, health insurance. I explained to her that normally under the statute that the party split the health insurance for the minor child. We had a discussion regarding that. And then to her, her she was just stating her concern about, about Avery is that Avery is, is still living. We had this discussion last time with your client counsel. I, I don't believe you were the one present, but we had this discussion with him before. He doesn't get to advocate his obligations to parent the child if he's going to have custody. It's kind of the way it is. You don't get to give it to someone else. We had that discussion where he wanted to give a guardianship to his mother, and I said, no, that's not how it works. Before, in this case, she would have to file an action in a, in a guardianship case to determine that these two parties can't handle this child, and that isn't what I had. Um, so we worked all that out, and now I'm hearing from mom that, that the child is still, that only grandma is the only one who's raising and that there's also, mom hadn't gotten to it, but in her motion, there was a lot about the child's grades, that it missed 24 days, I think, since March. The court is concerned um, about Trish, that. Did you, is, is, mom, that. is mom still arguing, or would you like me to, to oppose now? No, or she's, I was just bringing you up to speed, counsel. She was still okay. discussing her side of the case. I just want to let you know that was where we were. We had gotten to that awesome, point when you, you. you got lost. Okay? Thank so just you. bringing you back up to speed so you don't have to go back through the whole video. Um, uh, later. So mom, mom, that's what I understand the issue is, right? And then you also had in your motion that he missed 24 days of school as of March 7th, 2020. Is that right? That's correct until, you know, um, pandemic started. Now it's, mm -hmm. you know, online at home. Right, right. Unfortunately, that's, but, yeah, what, that's what he was doing. Okay, so, so those are my concerns. Those are the concerns that you've put forward to the court, right? You say you now have a two-bedroom townhouse, the you're in the child's school zone, and all of those issues. Okay, so that's what your argument is for a basis for change. The child has school issues, and the child has allergy problems that are being um, that are problematic. Is that right, Mom? Correct. Okay. All right, um, Miss Locke. Let's let's talk about your client and your client's opposition and counter motion. Um, as I know your firm is aware, I do read everything, but. Um, but with that being said, I am a little concerned of the issues that, that mom is bringing up. We had this discussion with your client, and I'm not quite sure what this issue is. Is he a long-haul truck driver again? Is he is he doing long-haul and he's gone for days and days at end? Or what's the staff status on that? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll address all of that in turn. Um, as you as you're, the court is aware, I was retained uh, about a week ago, so I was not the one who drafted the opposition and counter motion, but I'll kind of go through... Okay, essentially what the framing of the argument would have been if I had drafted. <laughs> so first of all, um, you know, you you are aware that mom's burden is um, to modify here primary to primary. So she needs to make a prima facie showing under Rooney um, that there's there's adequate cause for a hearing. And, and she needs to specifically make a prima facie showing that there's been a substantial change in circumstances affecting Avery's welfare and that the modification that she's requesting would be in his best interest. So, uh, so now I'll kind of get into the facts of why that's just not the case here and why you know my client's position is that this motion should just be dismissed without an evidentiary hearing under Rooney. So first, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the primary concerns, right? First of all, Avery has had allergies since he was born and he has been living in grandmother's house next door to dad's house, right right next door, for the last four years. So the last time that the, the party stipulated to a schedule was, I believe, in 2019, which, you know, at that time, he was, he was living at grandma's. So for mom to come before the court now and advertise that this is a concern for her is, is sort of facetious. It's, it's certainly not a change in circumstances affecting Careful, I his I disagree because dad and I had a discussion regarding it last time. And I said, grandma is not the parent. The child needs to be in your care. And we discussed that. So I don't yes, I, that that is not a change. If, if he did not do what the court said, then that's clearly a change for this court. Okay, and then and then as to the allergies issue, um, he he's had nasal issues since he had nasal surgery as a child, and so you know these these inflated concerns about his nasal drip are are again unrelated to his allergies. 
Um, additionally, dad installed ventilation early this year in February before mom's motion to make it so that the air quality in the home that he's living in is, is surgical standards. Um, now, now, mom alleges in her motion that there's a toxic environment at grandmother's house, but she claims that she hasn't spoken to the grandmother in eight years. I, I fail to see how that's possible that you can adequately assess the child's environment if you haven't spoken to the person with whom he's living. Um, now as to the school attendance argument, it's just, it's just false. So if we're looking at this exhibit four in mom's motion, it clearly lays out all of the courses that he's missed and it shows the maximum number per, for one class is five. She circles this number 24 as if each of these days is a class on its own and that's simply not the case. Students who are in high school have multiple classes per day. So if he misses one day of school, he gets an absence in every single one of the courses for that day. So really what we're looking at is a maximum of five days between the start of the semester in August and the middle of the next semester in March. And additionally, this, this um, you know, the, the maximum I was looking at CCSD's policy for when a child, when it starts to affect their grade and when it becomes, you know, a, a factor that will affect their performance in school, and it's 10 per semester. So he's clearly not to that point. Um, he hasn't been marked truant. He hasn't been held back in any courses. Mom has failed to, you know, and, and you know, we're talking about LSV Carucci standard here, which grade slippage was, was a substantial change. But in that case, the father had shown that he was much more involved in the child's schooling than the primary custodian that he was in contact with the teachers constantly, more so than the primary custodian, and that grades, you know, performance and preparation was slipping. Here, that's just simply not the case. First of all, Avery has A's and B's and perhaps one C is what dad reports. Dad checks his grades once a week. He's in regular contact with Avery's teachers. Um, Any time that Avery misses an assignment, you know that school is online, uh, anytime he receives an email from, from one of Avery's teachers that he's missed an assignment, he reports that he talks to Avery about it, and by the time that he talks to him, he's already submitted the late assignment. So he's actually excelling in school given the circumstances, right? I understand that we're in a pandemic, but he's doing well. On top of that, um, you know, the, the child being taken to and from school, I know that that issue will obviously come up once school is back in session, but right now, I mean, the kid, the child just stays home and, and goes through his day, and dad reports that he's extremely self-sufficient in that regard. He wakes up, he gets dressed, he eats, he goes to class, he doesn't miss any online classes. Um, as I said, he's getting A's and B's and maybe one C. Um, on top of that, this is outside of his coursework, dad reports that Avery is studying Japanese because he wants to get in touch with his uh, paternal culture. And so he's taking it upon himself to go beyond the scope of his education and teach himself Japanese. He's often over, you know, next door at dad's house talking to great grandma in Japanese and trying right, to learn Kendall, this language. You know, the problem I'm having is you keep saying, I'm assuming he's living with dad and over at grandma's house most of the time. Is that not the case? Because that would be a problem. If he, if he is living just with grandma, that is a problem. We had that discussion before with dad. I understand, Judge, and I and I, I, I will concede that, that he is living next door at Grandma's house. Now, um, again, I just recently got on this case, and so I wasn't aware that the court was primarily concerned with that, but he lives right next door, and he has the capacity for Avery to live with him. So so that is something that can easily be addressed. The, the fact is that is. dad is, on, if I could just finish my argument, that the fact is that dad is actively involved in his care. They see each other before and after school every single day. There's this sort of tone that mom is setting that dad is gone for weeks at a time. And I want to address that next, his job. He did have an internship um, to become a long haul truck driver. And that took him in the last year, it took him out of town for two separate five day long trips. And that's the extent of it. Now he's being paid and he only has, he has a contract run that he's been doing for the last several months with his, his friend's trucking company. And it takes him out of state twice a week and it's a single day trip. So he goes to Arizona and he comes back within the same day. He's back before dinner time twice a week and that's his job. And the, moreover, that's a contract run. And so his company has a contract with this place in Arizona so that this is going to be his work situation for at least the next six months, if not a year. And because he's working for his friend's trucking company, his friend is aware that he has a child. He's aware that he can't do these long haul cross country treks because he has a child. And so he said that he'll keep him in the neighboring states so that, no, so that any job that they accept, he will be home in time for dinner with his son. 
Um, now, a, a, I want to address, too, mom's living situation, right? Because she, she makes all these claims that her situation has changed, but she doesn't really connect it to Avery's best interests or that it affects him. She says that she has this condo, but my client believes that the lease ends in December and that mom, now that mom is engaged, she's intending to move in with Cody Greenfield, who this court has repeatedly said should not have any contact with the child. Um, and on information and belief, mom lives primarily with Cody right now. And so Kobe, the older child, is living in the condo alone. Um, and so that would be where Avery would be staying, is at mom's condo alone or at Cody's when she moves in with him, which is just a non-starter, right? This, this man has exhibited abuse against the mother, abuse against the oldest child who's now of majority. Um, and moreover, the kids were interviewed in 2017. So, so Avery is now 15. At the time, he was 12. Um, Kobe and and if you'll rec if the court will recall, in this child interview um, in November 2017, Avery and Kobe both expressed that they wanted to live with dad because of mom's yelling and because of Cody's bullying. Specifically, Cody called the boys gay and stuff. And uh, mom thought that this kind of behavior and, and derogatory speaking between Cody and the boys would turn them into men. Um, Kobe said that in that child interview, and I know this isn't Avery, but Kobe was a little older then, um, said that he was hurt that their mom had chosen Cody over them and that mom consistently okay. used them as messengers and interrogated them when she was upset with their father. Now, I... I just, it, it's hard to believe that she's coming to this court and saying that she's engaged and this should should create a circumstance to change custody when this court, and she has repeatedly agreed that she would not have contact with this person. So it's my client's position that if there is a change in circumstances, it's the fact that mom is now openly and aggressively in a relationship with this man and um, it militates against a modification. In fact, it militates in favor of dad getting even more custody because of the presence of Cody in these kids' lives. Um, finally, mom wants reunification with her with her fiance. She states that in her motion, which is not, um, the court, I don't believe the court has authority to order a child to reunify with a non-parent, particularly one who has been, you know, several times um, forbade from seeing the children. And even if he did, just like grandma would have to file her own, you know, guardianship motion, he would have to file a motion under 125C for third party visitation. And that's just, the, the burden has not been met. Um, now I wanna talk about finally the, the best interest factors because that is the second prong of Ellis v. Carucci. Um, three of them are, are very, you know, they're front and center here. First is the child's preference if he's of the age and capacity to have an opinion as to custody. Now we know that he's 15 years old, but his brother was granted complete discretion at the age of 17. So I, I think that the court should, in, in, you know, reinstitute that teen discretion. And if not, I mean, he's going to be driving soon, right? He's 15. He's going to get his permit. Um, if, if it's not willing to do teen discretion because it wants to continue that relationship with mom, then he should at least um, have a, a child interview to, to basically establish, you know, uh, finer boundaries for, for his custody with mom. But he's 15. He's taller than both I parents. Go through the rest of the factors because um, let, let's go through the, my position as that. I'm going to hear back sure. from mom, but I, I actually I, I got the rest. And the only issue, the only one Great. that would be a concern for me would be the first factor, factor A, which would be the child's age. Okay. Mom, let's talk about a couple issues regarding this. Um, look, so this is the situation. Uh, let me clarify one thing, counsel. When you say dad lives next door to mom, are we exactly next door? Because there's difference. If you have two pieces of property and there's two pro homes on this, you know, I'm okay with that. If it's exactly next door, if it's three doors down, I'm not. No, it's exactly next door. So dad lives with great grandma in one house and directly next door is Avery and grandma. And they, they go back and forth all the so time. The they watch. taking care of this child. Okay. All right. So I'm yes. okay with all right, just wanted to clarify that for number one, because before we talked, when we talked with Dad before, when you were not part of this case, it was about him trying to want to do a guardianship, and I was not okay with that when we have parents. So, okay, Und so that's my question for that. Mom, um, looking at the looking at the grades issue, it's really just five days. There's a difference. I don't see there's a big a big change, Mom. Tell me anything okay. else you wanted to say, because I'm going to hear, hear from you, but i got to tell you, I'm not seeing the basis under the first prong on Ellis versus Carucci for a change of custody. Uh, regarding the second thing that I need to hear from you regarding that um, is my concern is, and maybe we can talk to dad and we can see if is dad, um, as Avery is now 15 and obviously he's a, bigger than he was when he was 13, I assume. I assume he grew. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know Avery. Maybe he was full grown at 10. I don't know. Every kid grows different. That he's more able to handle himself in the situation around Cody Greenfield. Uh, my question for dad would be, is he, is he okay with him at least being around him because he now has a cell phone. I assume he has a cell phone. He has the ability to communicate. Once he's driving, he could always go get in, you know, have a vehicle or, or get home, you know, on his own. Is that a problem, Dad? Or are you still so concerned now that Avery is older? It's different when he's a little, little kid, right? He can't stand up for himself as much. And now, but now maybe he can. How are we about the Cody Greenfield issue, Dad? Uh, yeah, Your Honor, I'm totally against it, only because um, I've talked to my son numerous times about it, you know, because uh, they, they are getting married, and she wants him to go to his wedding, and I asked him, would he like to go, and he specifically told me to my face that he does not feel comfortable around Cody, and he does not want to go around Cody whatsoever, and uh, my older son, Kobe, I know he's not in this, but he also stated the same thing. And the only way that Kobe will go over there with Don and uh, Cody is when his cousin is there, Marcus. Other than that, he wouldn't go. Um, and um, Avery does not want to be around him whatsoever. Well, this uh, is the problem, Dad. They're clearly getting married. I've got to find a way to keep a relationship with Mom, but also to make sure. My, my issue with Cody would be safety, right, Dad? Just because he doesn't mm -hmm. want to go around somebody is not the same. Like, I, I, I'm I sorry, Your Honor. Go ahead, Kathy. I'm, sorry, I just wanted to chime in because I don't think that the the issue was ever that Cody was um, violent toward the kids physically, but the fact is that he's Oh, just I read the CPS records, counsel. I actually read the CPS records. I apologize then. I, I spoke out of turn, but I think that the ongoing issue, aside from the physical violence, is that he's just not a, a positive presence. He calls them gay. He, he calls them effeminate. Um, and I don't think well, that this is appropriate so for My it. thought is this. My thought is this. I just want you to walk down the path with me, my thought process in this for everybody, okay? My, my thought process is Cody doesn't, or um, Avery doesn't have to like Cody or think that he's a great person. I can institute a behavior order that says anybody around this child is not going to disparage him and do all those kind of things. Um, my concern, though, and, and, and because... Avery is now older. I'm not as worried because Avery can voice to his dad, look, Ma, dad, this is going on. This guy is doing this, this, and this, and he he's probably much more strong in his opinion now that he's 15. Because most 15-year-old boys have an opinion now. I mean, I hope he's, you know, they all get older and a little bigger and that kind of thing. So the issue becomes, my concern is, at whenever we were last before the court, Ms. Perez said she wasn't having anything to do with Cody. Cody was out of the picture. That was the testimony. I went and looked back through it before for preparation for today. My concern, though, is is that, look, I, I, she's entitled to move forward with whoever she wants. The concern is whether I let the child, because I have jurisdiction of the child, go over there. As far as reunification, no, he's not a parent. He's not even a step-parent at this point. And I don't know if next week you guys are going to have another falling out, because by your own testimony, you guys are on again, off again, on again, off again for four years. So with that being said, I'm not ordering this child to do reunification with a non-parent nor a non-person. Frankly, you know, that is, one, I don't have jurisdiction over Cody to do that. I do have jurisdiction over Avery not to allow him near Cody. And, may, and, and I have jurisdiction over you, Mom, and over you, Dad. But my concern, though, is, Dad, is, is look, are you, as at least Avery is strong enough, look, to handle those kind of things a little better. Is that true? <laughs> Well, Avery has shared with me that he is he doesn't care. He, he'll be fine to go around Cody. We were just doing it in a very slow process because I understand how it could be awkward and, and rebuilding a relationship with all of us. Because Avery even specified that he wanted to be at our wedding. He wants to be in our wedding. Well, he's with the specified. Father. Look, he sounds like he's trying to please both of you. He's trying to well, please exactly. Dad by saying I don't want to. I'm trying to please Mom by saying I do wow. want to. When I is the wedding, Mom? When is the wedding, Mom? It's in, next year, at the end of next year. Okay. All right. October. When are you moving in with him? What is that? When are you moving in with him? It will be in January because I did have my own place this entire year. Okay, that answers my question. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not making a judgment on it. I'm just saying when. I'm just trying to find out all the facts for me to well, make I a determination here, of what we're going to do. Well, I'm, I've been here, like they said, I've been here most of the time, too. And my other son has been at the other place. Okay. Um, 
So, and he's all right. Look, 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 this is my concern. I, I'm, I'm, I, my, my thought process with, with um, Cody is that I'm not doing anything like reunification counseling. You are correct. One, I don't have jurisdiction over Cody to order such a thing, nor would I. Um, he's not the parent. I don't know if he's even going to be in her life tomorrow with the on again, off again for four years. I don't know. Um, unless they have another child together that they share that they would be stuck together for life. I don't know that. Do you have a child with Cody? No. Okay, so I don't know that. You know, people are stuck together no matter what, whether they're stuck together and living together or whether they're, um, whenever they have children, but you guys don't even, don't even have that. So look, this is my concern. I'm not going to modify mom's time. Mom's time is very limited in this case anyways with the child. Um, I'm have, you know, if everybody wants the child to be interviewed, I'm fine to do that. I'm not going to say he's going to be forced to go on your wedding if it's your day, but look, Dad, I expect to. I, I assume you're trying to raise responsible, respectful children to become responsible, respectful adults, and that would be sometimes you go do things with the other parent. I don't know if you have a girlfriend or you don't have a girlfriend or you're going to get a girlfriend or whatever. He might not like her either, but that isn't a basis for me to say he can't be around her. My, my order would be that I would do a behavior order that mom is required and dad is required, so we'll make it a mutual behavior order to protect this child as far as being disparaged by other people in your circle. Like, your, like for instance, dad, if your mom started saying something, if, if it's not a girlfriend, right? If she started talking bad about your son, that would be against the behavioral order as well. Fair, dad? I mean, yeah, I mean, I can go with that, but... Um, my concern, Your Honor, is what happens because Cody has a short temper. So what happens if he and my son get in a fist fight or anything of the sorts? Well, what, what I, I hope go? that Cody goes to jail, number one, and your son, your, how big is your son? I, I'm saying he's not a little kid now, right, Dad, that he could he's be... Ten. No, he's he's a... Uh, yeah, he's, he's tall, he's tall, but at the end of the day, you know, like I said, Cody Greenfield has a short temper, he drinks, uh -huh. um... I'm not 100% on this, but I know they, I've heard through the grapevine they do drugs and whatnot, but I'm not, I don't, I'm not concerned about that. I'm just concerned about my son's well-being. Well, my you concern know. is that, that the, the fact that there's not, a, mom does not have a lot of time in the scheme of things as far as the current custodial order. I am denying the request for a motion to modify custody. I don't find that there's been a basis to do the change under Ellis versus Carucci under the first prong. The fact that he had five missed, missed days and he's doing pretty well in school, I'm fine with. The fact that he had allergies since birth, that's not a change of circumstance. I appreciate that you guys have made some modifications to help the child with his health. I don't find any of this that she put in here. And all the things that she did doesn't focus on the child. That's not part of Ellis versus Carucci. Had, that, had we been in an old standard, in the Murphy standard before Ellis versus Carucci, yeah, I would have had to consider that. But I don't consider that in the current state of Nevada law. So with that, I'm going to deny her motion for that. As of right now, she only has the first and third weekends from Friday after school until 3 p.m. or um, or 3 p.m. until Sunday at 8 p.m. It's only two days, twice a month. And because he is is 15 now, I'm not as worried about him, Dad, as far as his ability. He has a cell phone. Is that correct? Yes, that correct? Honor, he has a cell phone. Honor, he has a cell phone. Mom, are you, Mom, let me ask you a question. Mom, are you, Mom, let me ask you a question. Dad, Dad's counsel also said, are we going to give this child teenage discretion? Mom, are you wanting that or are you not wanting that? I haven't heard from you on that issue. Well, if if we did, it, then he would he he would just stay home. And okay, do then I don't. Then that's and the I issue. Just, the only people that I give home. teenage. Okay, the only people I give teenage discretion are is if they're responsible enough to make sure and at least facilitate a relationship with the other parents. If he's not, then he's not. He's only he is only fifteen. But though I keep saying he's older, like fifteen. He still is only 15. He's not 17. He's not driving. He's not those kind of things yet. So I don't think, I think it's a little premature on that even. And I am not a big fan of teenage discretion because look, we are supposed to be the parents here. We don't let our kids not brush their teeth, not go to school, not do what their, their homework. We have to take charge. And part of it is follow court orders. Right now I have a court order. I don't want to teach a child that he doesn't have to follow any kind of court order because we want him to be a responsible adult and so that he doesn't end up in jail or anything like that. We're all trying to raise healthy, mature, you know, responsible citizens for, for the county. I'm not going to change, not going to give teenage discretion right now. I'm not going to bar him from seeing Cody Greenfield, but I am going to institute a behavior order that says you have to protect your, your son. And if he starts saying things, mom, if you don't put their child first, then your visitation could maybe 
Go back, go to supervised visitation where I order Cody Greenfield not to be around your child. Are we clear on that? So you better make sure that Cody Greenfield understands that. He better control his temper if that's the problem. Because I did read the child, the child, um, um, child um, CPS records. I did read those, and they uh, it did it was troubling. A lot of things that your children said in there were, was troubling, Mom. So we're not going to go down that path. I'm not going to bar him from that anymore um, because of what you're saying, and most importantly because um, Avery has gotten older. I think he can handle it. But if there's a problem, Mom, if there's a problem, Dad, file a motion back with my court regarding it on issues of Cody Greenfield, and we'll certainly address it. Are we clear on that, Mom? You better warn Cody. Yes. Really really. Oh, and I, I am him. not even yeah worried. Life okay. has changed completely, so. No, well, that's great. I hope it has for everyone. That's going to be my order. I'm denying the other other request. Um, Council, I don't think there, I, I understand the other part of your request. Um, there was no nothing in the motion regarding um, attorney's fees, so I am not granting that. I'm not saying any of that, Council, so because they did their own motion, I'm not granting any of that, but I, I mean it is a concern that you are, that your client is a prevailing party in this motion, so I am inclined. What, what was your retainer agreement? Uh, our, our retainer agreement was for 4000 assuming this would be contracted and potentially go to an evidentiary hearing. So uh, so probably 2000 would be... Okay, um, Council, look, look this is the situation. I'm, I'm not, I don't allow, um, as a prevailing part of the court on its own under 18010 can grant um, attorney's fees regarding this as long as both parties have filed financial... Did your client file a financial disclosure form, Council? I showed you... Um, I, I don't believe he did. I have not had time to prepare one uh, before this hearing, but I can certainly get that filed uh, before the end of the week. Okay, this is what I'm going to allow, Council. You're going to file a memorandum of cost and fees along with the order denying her, her motion, but also saying that the court's entering a behavior order. Um, if you're... I, I do expect... I do expect to look down... I do expect um, your child to observe... Big, -ish, big events at mom's, as, as I expect your child to observe big events at dad's. Maybe within a year the, that his relationship, or at least there will be some proof that Cody has changed and, he's, and your son is comfortable, um, I would expect you guys to work it out to make sure that the child goes. That's a big event. If it works out to be um, a solid marriage, I don't know. I, I don't have a crystal ball, unfortunately. They didn't give me one of those when they gave me my robe. So clearly that's where we're going to go. I'm going to encourage parties because one other thing, Dad, is under NRS 125C0035, under subsection C, under the factors, um, as a custodial parent, you're required to facilitate a relationship with a non-custodial parent. And that would include those kind of big things. And this court does weigh heavily on that factor. I do look at that factor because, look, that's what you guys are supposed to be doing for the good of your child in this case. Um, so uh, the court's going to enter the behavior. I'll issue a big behavior order, my standard behavior order today. Miss um, um, Lux, you can, I need you to prepare the order for today and submit a memorandum of cost and fees. Leave me a line for attorney's fees. I am going to grant attorney's fees to respond to even if it wasn't in there as long as there's a financial disclosure form. As you know, there's required to be under Miller versus Wilfong. And under the right on um, right versus Osborne, I need a financial disclosure form by both parties that shows um, so I can look at it for a comparison on income. And I will yes. fill in that line um, okay. in that issue. Other than that, the rest of the issues are resolved. Um, uh, our order. Judge, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't catch your orders. I think I was kicked off when when you were talking about um, the the insurance, the insurance and the child support request. I didn't catch the order on those. Yeah, the I child her, I her child support has, is moot. The issue, hold on a minute, let me explain what I said. The child support issue is moot because her, she's back to work, okay. back to her normal job. Oh. Because I said to ask her if she's back, I said my dentist is back full time, and we had that discussion when you were kicked off. Um, the issue is under under statute. Um, what are you saying, Mom? Go ahead. Um, in regards to the insurance, um, it said last time in February that he is responsible to carry insurance for Avery. And he hasn't he hasn't done it since February 2020. Okay, yeah. So, so who has insurance? Let's talk about who has child ins who has sure. insurance with child now. So, judge. So, um, uh, so my, sense if I could just you. respond, uh, my client was did not qualify for Medicaid. So he was he lost his trucking business, and then he didn't qualify for Medicaid due to passive income. But he but the. Um, the Cobra insurance was unaffordable, and so he was hoping that one one parent could maintain insurance, and the other will just split the premium. Um, and if, so if that mom is still still and he, I asked questions? him this, uh, Your Honor. So I did attain the insurance, and I asked him to help pay the premium. And okay, he, this is my he order, Mom. 
My order is that, that if you've got in, obtained insurance for the child, that's great, then, then he has to split the cost with you. So right. what'll ha how much is the cost? You have to provide proof of what it is just for Avery, though, Mom. Okay? So the thing is, that's that's my issue. It, when you just add family, it's automatically $200 extra a month on the premium, whether it's one okay. child or, or more. And I did already give him that information through family okay. So you're telling me it's $200 per month, is that right? Correct. So then it's $100 for dad to pay, and that'll come off your child support, is it, is, as long as she's provided proof. Dad, she says she submitted that to you already. Is that right, counsel? Uh, I, I have not seen it, but it's possible that my client just didn't give that to me yet. I, okay, Ms. Perez, yeah. I'm going to ask that you are going to submit it to Ms. Locke so she can review it to make sure that it, that's the added portion for, the, for, for your child. You put that on, and then, that, then, that, then Dad will split that in half, and that will come off the child support. Okay, Mom? Any okay, other questions? and will that be retro back to June uh, when it started? Um, yes, she, he should. By statute, he should have paid half of that counsel. So if it, she if she can provide proof that it was to June, then she will get the hundred dollars, whatever. It'll be sounds like it'll be like one month. I don't know how it will work out with math. It's math. Just do the math. Whatever it works out. I've got it. Hundred dollars, <laughs> June, July, August, September, October, whatever. Just just minus yeah. that. Okay, counsel. Anything else, mom? I've got to move on. I have uh, four other here at this hour. I appreciate it. I, yes. Sorry, okay. Judge. Just one last one last request. I believe that the party said that they might be already back on our family wizard at the time that the motion and opposition were filed. They weren't, and so my client just wanted to make sure that they were exclusively using that to communicate. And that's yes, that's, the last uh, that, that's my order. I, I put that into my notes as well, counsel. That our family wizard should occur. That that you guys need to communicate that way. Um, any, any question? Any dispute on that, Mom? Um, no. We're we've been using it. Um, and okay, good also. Sir. Just the fact that on the visitation, we haven't been doing that because he's been having teenage discretion. The father hasn't been enforcing that visitation, so I was just hoping to reiterate When did you that see him last? When did you see him I last? See, well, I see him once a week. I pick him up to visit with him for a few hours because um, we weren't doing the weekend thing. So Okay, um, well, that's what my order is. I'm not changing the order, Dad. I'm not giving teenage discretion at this point, so um, you guys need to follow the order. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, Judge, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, counsel, prepare the order submitted to my court. Um, you need to submit it to Ms. Perez for review. If she doesn't respond in five days after you submit it, you can submit it without her, her without her signature as long as you attach proof that you emailed it to her and that she didn't respond. Okay, counsel? Yes, Judge, thank you very much. Thank you for your appearances. Thank you.